Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Lill. We are back with the final part of this $2,500 buy-in World Series of Poker Hand History Review. This is the final table. We're down to only three people. Next person out gets $191,000. That's a nice payday. Second gets two hundred sixty-one, and the winner gets 356000 We have Kristen Bicknell here, one of the best poker players in the world, going for her third bracelet. So I'm excited to see how she plays. Here we have a limp from Bellarmino. We discussed limping in one of the previous parts of this hand history review. Make sure you check that out. Those are on YouTube. So go and look at those. We discuss open limping with the medium stack, and it makes sense in this scenario to some extent. I would probably just raise it, but if you do raise and get three bet, it's pretty rough. Whereas if you limp and someone raises, you can see the flop every time with a hand that flops well in position. So I certainly understand the purpose of limping. Also, this heads up battle we're about to see is very long lasted about an hour. I went through and cut out a lot of the irrelevant hands that you know, weren't all that substantial. I mean, every hand's relevant, but they weren't all that substantial, so I cut out a lot of those. We're just gonna be reviewing some of the bigger ones. So here, Alia raises to five big blinds and gets called by the ace eight suited as expected. You have to be a little bit careful betting on boards like queen eight blank because this is a board that should connect pretty well with Bellarmino's limping range, if you think about it. It should be a lot of middle connected cards which have a pair or a draw or suited aces that have a backdoor draw with an overcard. So I'm not sure you're gonna have too much fold equity in the spot, so you have to be a little bit careful. I may not even raise the ace nine offsuit over the limp if you expect the, limping, the limps to limp call frequently. And Bellarmino seem to be very competent so far, so I would not expect his limping range to be all that weak. I expect it to be just a lot of hands that flop decently well. So I don't even know if you need to raise this over a limp. I know it's um, enticing to, if you think your opponent's gonna play very straightforwardly post-flop, but Bellarmino's shown that he's coming to play. Ace three off suit raises it up. I think you can bet or check this board. This is a board that's very good for the big blind because the big blinds have a whole lot of middle connected type cards, right? And this just nails that range. When it goes check, check, this is a very easy spot for Alia to bet. He does go for a big bet, which is interesting. Um, so in general, when it goes raise, call, Check, check, flop. The out of position player, if they are going to bet the turn, very often wants to use a large size, especially when they have a significant nut advantage, meaning they have more nuts in their range than their opponent. And there, the big blind probably has lots of eights, whereas the initial raiser may not. So that's a scenario where I definitely think it is reasonable to go for a big turn bet. And you should consider that. This, uh, turnover bets are something I am certainly not the best at, and most people don't even, even consider. But the times you want to go for it is when you have a big range advantage slash nut advantage and your opponent is somewhat capped, meaning they probably don't have a whole lot of trips that you could have. Here we have a bit of a setup. Let's see how this one goes down. Pretty deep stacks too. Uh, Bellarmino has 40 big blinds. So here we have a raise from Kristen. I think I like a call from the sevens. And now with jacks, you probably just want to jam it in, I suppose. The pot's already a million chips. So if you jam here and they all fold, you increase your stack by a pretty large chunk. So I think you just want to go all in. I don't think you want to do any small three bet because if you do a small three bet, um, your opponent's yet to act could call you. And then they see a flop and then you're gonna be out of position with the jacks, which are gonna flop poorly sometimes. Let's see if Kristen can continue running hot. She's won a bunch of the all in so far. Ooh, she has to fade a jack or a diamond. River is, we'll sweat it out on GG Poker here. Ooh, it's a diamond. Bellarmino is going to get the full double plus sum. Wow. It's always nice to spike when your head's up or three-handed for all the money in a World Series event. So now Bellarmino has a whole lot of chips, about half of them in play. We have a raise from Elia. I would be calling or three betting with the Queen Jack. Nines are an easy all-in as well. This is a similar spot to what Bellarmino just had. Facing a jam, I think King Jack suited probably needs to fold. Like, if you knew Kristen was someone who was, like, super tilty or something like that, which she's not. She's a very strong world-class poker player. But if she knew she was very tilty, perhaps you could call it off there with the King Jack suited. But you really don't want to flip. In this scenario, when one player has a lot of chips and the two, two other players have relatively shallow stacks, you ideally want to just wait for that other person to go broke. That said, if, you, if it's clear both of you are just going to sit there and blind each other down, you'd probably rather get in a confrontation because that way at least one of you has a chance to win whereas if you two both just blind out then neither of you has a chance to win right you just want to make sure you're getting money in decently well 
Hey, we have a raise. Bellarmino could three bet again. I would have no problem with three betting. I think you probably should be three betting a lot in this spot, especially with hands that are not good enough to call. Interesting flop. Everybody has a little something. Yes, a gut shot is a little something. Check, check. I like a check from the Jack-10 in this spot. If you bet and get called or raise, it's not great, but if you can check it down, you win a lot of the time. So I definitely like a check down. Should the Ace-7 bet turn? You can go either way. You definitely don't want to get raised, but you do have the best hand a lot when it checks through. So I like a medium bet. I think that's nice. This is another example of a scenario where if you expect to face a lot of aggression, you should definitely just check. But if you expect your opponents just to be checking it down very frequently when it goes check, check, check on the flop, you probably want to go ahead and bet if they're going to be passive. On the river, can you value bet again? Eh, probably not. It's easy for your opponent to have a hand like king of spades, jack. King, jack of spades, right? They could also have queen 10. They could have a better ace. So I like the check. And I don't think the jack 10 needs to bluff there, although it's at least reasonable. Ace three opens it up. Again, the two shallow stacks battling. This is a reasonable flop for Kristen. She makes the trips. She checks. Ace I can check her bet. Either play's fine. This is kind of similar to that 855 board we saw earlier where um, you may not want to be continuation betting too often, but it's fine, especially with backdoor flush draw, unless you think you're going to get raised a lot. If you think you're going to get raised a lot, you definitely don't want to check. Kristen is pretty aggressive post-flop from my experience, so maybe she's the type of player you don't want to necessarily bet against too often. Like if you give her 9-6 here, I'm sure she'll probably raise, and that clearly puts you in a bad spot. She does raise, and that puts the ace three in a bad spot with a nut heart draw, I think, or nut back door heart draw. I think you have to continue. You don't love it, but that's kind of the mess you get yourself in by betting. You may say, it's obvious she has trips. Why would you ever continue with the ace of hearts only? Because you don't know she has only trips. I mean, I literally just said she could have the nine six, right? Or the six five, or the nine five. And all of those hands you're crushing. So you generally know which turn cards are bad for you. You really don't want to see a jack, 10, 9, 6, 5, or 4. Those are all pretty rough for you. Obviously, you could just be in bad shape, though. This is one of these scenarios where you have to consider, do I want to defend appropriately at all? Do I even care about that? And if you don't care about that, then maybe just substantially overfold. But you're playing against a good, world-class, aggressive player. And against those players, you have to be willing to stick around a little bit more than with only the absolute best hands. She makes a turn bet, easy call. Interesting turn bet because a lot of draws get there. You would definitely think she could check turn. It's kind of thin to go for full value in this spot when you definitely could be against the flush and a flush never folds. Also, it's kind of hard to get called by an eight anymore on this river, so I think it's probably a check on the river, even though she does have the best hand the vast majority of the time. It'd be thin. I mean, I guess... Like, does Jack-10 even call if you jam the river? I don't know. Probably not. I think the only way to get any potential action out of the river is to check and then induce a bluff. Again, we skipped a few hands. Apologies if I didn't quite cut it perfectly. Cut the video perfectly. Here we have a jam. Big jam. How many big blinds is this? This is 17 big blinds with Ace-4 offsuit. What do we do? I think it's a fold. But it's definitely close. Closer than you may think, but I think you probably want to fold in this scenario. He is against pocket twos. The problem is you're going to be dominated by a lot of ace -X in this scenario, so I think you probably do just want to fold. Can Bellarmino get there on the river again? He does. Just like that, we're heads up. Kristen against Bellarmino. Here we have king six suited on the button. Bellamino likes to limp. Kristen's going to raise. I imagine I would raise to something like three and a half or four big blinds in this scenario with the pocket jacks out of position. And that's exactly what she does. Flop comes 10, nine, five, two spades. This is well, either going to be good or great for one of these players uh, and terrible for the other. So I imagine Kristen's probably just going to go bet, 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 trying to get all in by the river. Although... She may check on various turn cards that complete straights and flushes. So she does make a small continuation bet. Um, 
I'm trying to think if she would prefer to bet bigger on the flop because you got to think she's going to have a decent advantage when she's facing a limp call. Although, I'm not entirely sure. I'm far from a absolute best heads up player in the world. Maybe this 10 9 5 does connect decently well with a reasonable limp calling range. It's tough to say because who knows what ranges are actually at play. Uh, turns a 7 of hearts, which is an interesting card because normally you'd have to worry about. Bellamino having a whole lot of hands like Jack-8 or 8-6 or 10-7 or 9-7 or 7-5. Like all of those hands I just listed, especially if they're suited, would very much like to limp and then call a raise, right? So for that reason, um, I think Kristen may be better off check calling, although betting could be fine. The problem with betting is that if you bet and get raised or even called, you really don't know where you stand and you're kind of stuck putting all your money in. And you're probably going to make your opponent fold out all of their junk. Whereas when you check, yes, the draws get to check behind sometimes if they feel inclined or set their own price. Whereas maybe Kristen would bet a million and maybe the draws, or 1.5 million, maybe the draws bet like 600k and get to see the river cheaper if they do decide to bluff. Um, Obviously, there are a lot of bad rivers, right? Any 10 is pretty bad, an 8 is pretty bad, a 6 is pretty bad. And a spade is pretty bad, and even a heart could be bad, so she really doesn't know what she has to fade. The problem, or the idea, though, is that heads up, yes, there are a lot of draws available, but you don't know which one your opponent has, and more often than not, they're not going to have it. So if I'm in Kristen's shoes here, either I'm just going to bet kind of big and not fold, or I'm going to check, looking to check call turn and then check call river on basically all rivers besides an 8 or a 6. That's probably an 8 or a 6 you can fold. Anything else... You probably have to pay. She does go for the check. Bellarmino, this seems like an obvious bluff spot. I mean, he lacks showdown value. He has a very, very good draw. So I like this bet. It's always brutal if you get check raised all in. I don't think Kristen should check raise all in because if she does, mostly better hands are going to call and she's going to be in pretty rough shape. Whereas if she calls, she keeps the worst draws in. She does call, and um, if she checks this river, I imagine Bellarmino has to bluff. I mean, this seems like a pretty obvious bluffing hand. You can get Kristen off random weaker one-pair type hands. Maybe some flush draws that are better than yours, like uh, queen three of spades. Assuming she'd raise that pre-flop, which maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. Maybe like ace three of spades is a better example. Anyway, Bellarmino does put her all in, and um, seems like a call to me. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate to call off your stack. Heads up in a World Series of Poker event for a bracelet, knowing that uh, you lose a lot of the time. <laughs> but I think it's a pretty easy call. Kristen's got the best hand there. Like, I don't even know, half the time, 65% of the time. I don't know. Pretty good amount, right? So you just have to call it off. And she gets the full double. Kristen limps. Bellarmino has a 7 2 offsuit. He makes it four big blinds, which, strong, you know? I am okay with this play. I would definitely recommend you be careful with it, though, because if you use a very big size, like notice you went 4.25, if you go 4.25 with exactly your garbage, well, that makes you pretty exploitable. Obviously, Kristen isn't going to call the raise with the ace-5. So check, check, flop. I imagine Bellarmino should probably be bluffing this on the flop or the turn. Whenever you check this board, you're basically saying, I don't think my opponent has any weak hands in the range at all, and I'm just giving up. When he goes, check, 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 backdoor flush. I imagine Kristen's going to bet Bellamino's going to have to call. If Kristen had no flush here, she's going to feel somewhat inclined to bluff. I think a medium size is nice. She goes pretty big. Sure, like all flushes are going to call, right? And she does win and gets to see the 7-2 as well, which is a lot of fun. All right, she is chipping up 73 big blinds to 38, about 2-1. to one. Bellamino limps. Kristen will probably raise this one, I imagine. 3.3 big blinds? Is that what that is? Interesting. Interesting smallish size. Mm, Fine enough flop. This flop is basically a bunch of blanks. So this is a scenario where I have to ask, am I betting everything or am I checking some hands? If you're going to check some hands, this ace-high type stuff is usually fine to put in your checking range, and under pairs are fine to put in your checking range. She goes in and bets, though. Bellamino floats with a gut shot, as you definitely should. Either call or raise. Um, Usually when you're in position, you want to be calling with draws, right? We discussed that a time or two in these hand reviews. 
And this is a very clear draw to the nuts that has a lot of bluffing potential on the turn and the river. King of Spades on the turn is very good for Kristen's range and pretty bad for Bellarmino, so he probably doesn't want to raise here, even though he does have an excellent draw. He does like to call. Does Kristen bluff one more time? I think all in would be reasonable. The problem is you're going to run into random king queen and it's like ace queen that hero calls you or queen jack that hero calls you. Notice there are a lot of bluffs in Kristen's range that would definitely like to bluff. Lots of spade draws, jack 10, assuming she raises these pre flop over the limp. Um, I, I don't know if I would bluff this, but in reality, you probably just should. It's one of the worst hands you could have, right? And you probably don't win at the showdown. That's really the issue is you just don't win at the showdown here. So should you turn a hand with little to no showdown value into a bluff, especially in spots where your opponent could easily have a three or a two? It's like, probably. And if he does have a queen, maybe you could even blast him off a queen if you jam it all in. That's a nasty spot. You have to be careful to not drastically over bluff against people, but uh, in my experience, people overfold, and if people overfold, you want to drastically over bluff. So we have a limp. Definitely bet big on this flop with the nut hand. Bellamino's probably just going to call, but raising's viable too. He does call. So a lot of people chicken out in Kristen's shoes on this club turn. Like, obviously, the king of clubs is not a great card for Kristen, but she still has the best hand the vast majority of the time. So she just wants to bet and get money in the spot. If you bet and get raised, yeah, it's nasty. But notice you have lots of flushes in your range, presumably, and um, so your opponent just can't raise you at will. Seems like an easy, easy big bet to me, though, like she does, so that's great. Don't be afraid. Heads up. Two pair is usually good. River Boat is uh, almost certainly good. I would go for a big bet again, like 2.4 million or something. You just want to look as polarized as you possibly can, especially when you have these nut hands. The only time you want to go for a small bet is when you are just very, very convinced your opponent's range is very weak. And to be fair, the opponent's range looks a whole lot like a five or a jack. So maybe that can only call a small bet. That said, Bellarmino still just may hero call with a five or a jack. So I would go pretty big like Kristen does in this scenario. And it's, it's kind of a tough spot for a jack. You have to think a lot of hands will keep betting the turn that have a club. And if, she's, if Kristen's sitting here with like queen high of clubs, Queen seven, a queen seven offsuit or something with the queen of clubs. She's definitely going to bluff the river. You have to think. So I think you have a reluctant hero call in this scenario. You don't block any flushes, but you also don't block any busted flush draws. So look, I hero call in these spots a lot, maybe inappropriately. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. The neat thing is you only have to be good about a third of the time. But Bellarmino makes the correct laydown this time. Here we have Lemp check. Seems like a fine spot to go for the Lemp bet. Um, queen high is fine, but kind of lacks showdown value. Kristen just lets it check, though. Probably going to, well, I've got to presume bluff at some point. Although maybe no bluff. Maybe no bluff necessary with the queen high. There's always some fine line heads up between needs to bluff and is like barely good enough to check it down. She doesn't like to just check it down, though. Makes the queen, and um, should probably go for value. She does go for value when it goes check, 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 check. Whenever you have something like middle pair and you just checked it down, it's perfectly fine to go for value. Bellarmino there missed his draw. Got outdrawn. Sometimes it's just not your day, you know? Ace-10, min raises, 7-4. Probably call. You can bluff it if you feel like it. Heads up's fun. You can just kind of get out of line whenever you want. <laughs> to be fair, look, I usually pick the hands more like Queen X offsuit, Jack X offsuit to bluff. I have a chapter in one of my books, Excelling at No Limit Hold'em by Olivier Bousquet, and he talks about how those weakish blocker hands are usually pretty good to bluff with. Because like 7-4 offsuit, you can realistically call profitably, and you don't have any blockers. When you have Queen X or Jack X, at least you block Ace Queen, King Queen, Pocket Queen, Queen Jack suited, etc., right? 7-4 blocks, literally nothing. So anyway, Kristen's just going to call down here, I imagine. Let's see if Bellarino is going to go off. Be optimistic. Could you imagine just three bed heads up and triple it off, no problem? All right, he checks turn. 
Um, if he has nothing, Kristen definitely wants to check to give him a chance to outdraw him. If he has a maid hand, though, like a king-queen, she probably just wants to bet. But I like the check. You want to do everything you can to induce bluffs. I mean, a jack would definitely check turn in Bellarmino's shoes. Maybe that's the spot to rip it in on the river. I, I, I would not fault him for ripping it in on the river. Can Kristen go for value? I mean, she's against a king here a ton, a king or worse. The problem is that every once in a while... Bellamino's going to show up with a better hand that's trapping every once in a while. So what's the, you're really asking yourself here, if I bet small, can a king call? And if I bet small and get raised, am I happy about that? I think, I think you should probably check there or bet small. Betting small is pretty rough against someone who's very good because they'll just check, check raise you all in as a bluff sometimes. And I think you probably... At least need to consider folding, given the way the hand played out. All right, limp check. Middle pair for Kristen. Top pair for Bellamino. Facing a small bet. I was going to say, this is a pretty good spot to put in a raise every once in a while if you want to raise stuff like 6-3 as well. Notice you have lots of draws available. Kristen kind of has to call in this scenario. In position, you really can't be folding pairs on uncoordinated boards. You're just folding way too often. And uh, especially you don't want to fold if you're going to drill a five on the turn. So now Kristen has the stone nuts and Bellarmino may be done. This could very easily be the last hand of this game. I imagine Kristen should just call again, right? Bellarmino's drawing thin to dead. You do not want to raise the turn because if you raise the turn and Bellarmino's bluffing with the 6-3, he's going to fold. Whereas when he gets to the river with the 6-3 for 6 high or 4-3 for 4 high, he's going to go all in. Kristen has an easy call. And just like that, Kristen wins the tournament along with the $356,000 that goes with it and her third bracelet. Congrats to her. Good job. Good work. That was a lot of fun. We, we saw some fun bluffs. We saw a few um, very, very premium hands that just happened to get flopped in the ideal times. And, well, I guess that's how it goes when you take one of the shortest stacks at the final table and end up winning with it. You're going to have to have your fair share of luck, but at the same time, Kristen played great, and uh, most of her opponents played great as well, so this was a fun final table. If you enjoyed this, Click like, click subscribe. Thanks again to GG Poker and WSOP for letting me use their content. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks again. Have fun. And I will talk to you next time.